Hey guys, Fireblade here, and welcome to another What If Ryuko is a Saiyan. Let's not waste any time, let's get right on into it. Now, from where we last left off, the story actually stays the same. And before I actually do continue on with the story to where it actually changes, I need to address kind of the elephant in the room. This was brought up in a comment. I never mentioned the Ozaru form. I couldn't really find a way to explain it. If anything, all of this will be explained with the knowledge that Ryuko is a Saiyan, mixed with the knowledge that the life fibers help humanity evolve to what it is in the show. We would basically get flashbacks from Ryuko's side from before being infused with life fibers to uh, the point where Ryuko found out or got, got the message from her dad. So as I said at the very beginning, Ryuko had to learn to overcome this, these traits of a Saiyan, like again, the immunity to eat a large amount of food and whatnot, the weakness of her tail. Unlike with the tail thing, which can be trained away as evident by Vegeta, everything else came pretty quickly because uh, Ryuko was infused with the life fibers. Like I said before, uh, the life fibers help humanity evolve, so there's no reason why it shouldn't have been able to help Ryuko. Uh, like for instance, with the food situation, because Again, she would like be picked on a lot and her food would probably be taken. She wouldn't have had the chance to eat as much as Goku would have when he was a kid. So thanks to being a food with life fiber, she was able to quickly evolve from needing a large sum amount of food to needing only an average to less than average amount of food that a human would need. As for the tail thing, that one came, like I said, a lot easier than it would have with Nappa. She just trained it away. Ryuko obviously would have had time to train that as well, but it came pretty quickly to her because again the life fiber in her was basically helping her evolve that weakness. Speaking of her tail, uh, she's explaining how uh, Nehru is also a Saiyan because in the original Nehru is just pure life fiber. Before Ryuko was infused with the uh, life fibers, she would have had turned into an Ozaru before which would give a regular the knowledge that Saiyans have this large amount of energy and with the tail and the full moon it is definitely something to keep a hold of, which is why she really wanted to keep this Saiyan. And if it comes in view with Life Fiber, then she basically has this ultimate warrior. But since she didn't want to, you know, her work to be destroyed by this Ozaru, she had to figure out what way is it to get rid of it. And yeah, they would have had the knowledge that Ryuko's tail was a weak spot, whether it would have been by accident or whatnot. She would have had that knowledge. They both would have had that knowledge. Radio and Matu, Dr. Matui. So, Radio made the decision to cut off Ryuko's tail, which ended up working. Knowing that it was the tail that basically is the key to all this, she had the tail basically cryo frozen until it was needed for another experiment that she was planning on doing. And obviously, since we know that the thing with Ryuko stays the same, Radio uses that tail along with the life fibers to basically make Nero, who is a Saiyan infused life fiber. Unlike Ryuko, who's a life fiber infused Saiyan. By this I am meaning that Ryuko is a Saiyan that has life fiber in her, while Nero is life fiber with Saiyan in her. I hope that makes sense. Anyways, the last word of advice that Ryuko got from her father before he left her at that, I think, boarding school, he told her to never look at a full moon, this is because Ryuko had her tail back. Obviously Ryuko would look at a full moon, but she would not have transformed into an Ozaru. This is once again because the life fiber had evolved with Ryuko to not needing to transform into an Ozaru. Basically the life fibers gave Ryuko the Ikari form. If you don't know what the Ikari form, it is the form that Broly uses in the Dragon Ball Super movie before he turned into a Super Saiyan. Just because Ryuko has that form doesn't mean she knows that she has it, nor that she knows how to use it. If Ryuko knew she had the Ikari form, none of this would have happened and Satsuki would have told Ryuko everything and asked her to help her. Right, I hope this makes sense. Uh, I've been trying to figure out a way to work around this. The idea of Ryuko having the Ikari form. Even though the answer was just simple. It was the life fiber to evolve to Ryuko. Anyways. Uh, back to the story. When Ryuko is disturbed by all the events that is happening outside. She wakes up and bursts out in her Super Saiyan state. And she easily tears through all the covers that are containing the other people. Just like the original, he yells at everybody about how she was just an alien and a monster. They tried to come to go down, but Ryuko isn't having any of it. She even yelled at, at the two nudist beach guys that they lied to her. Uh, the one that was the teacher basically explains to Ryuko that they didn't know at all that Dr. Matui didn't explain this to them at all. All he knew was that Sengetsu and that it was supposed to be Ryuko's and Ryuko was supposed to help defeat Reikyo. That's all he knew. The other one obviously threatens Ryuko the same like he did in the original, but Ryuko obviously threatens to go after him as well, especially since, you know, she's a Super Saiyan right now. 
she can easily just kill him. Ryuko is about to fly off when uh, Mako tries to stop her. She tries to cheer up Ryuko by doing the whole uh, spotlight thing, but it is ultimately interrupted by Ryuko gut punching her. Now keep in mind, Ryuko is a super saiyan, so normally this gut punch would have just killed Mako, but Ryuko was still holding herself back, but not really enough because this gut punch actually causes Mako to spit up blood and brings her down to her knees. Gamma Gordy goes to Mako and basically yells at Ryuko. She isn't listening, she just flies off. The events with the resistance plays out uh, exactly the same actually. Even Sasuke's escape plays out the exact same. As for Ryuko, Ryuko flies to the mansion where not only she got Sengetsu but where her father died. She goes over there wanting to be alone. But after like a few minutes at the covers come to Ryuko and obviously Ryuko's not having any of this, she just wants to be alone. She obviously destroys him. That is until Regio and Niru egged Ryuko on like they did in the original series. And just like in the original series, Ryuko charges straight at them. Uh, Niru is there to uh, basically stop Ryuko having to transform into her Super Saiyan state. Now Ryuko, despite being out of the commission for like a few months, has gotten stronger. So Niru is kind of forced to use these clones of hers. Now like in the original, Niru isn't trying to kill Ryuko, she's just trying to stall her until she gets captured by the life fibers from Junketsu. Just like in the original, Junketsu uh, latches onto Ryuko and basically becomes a part of Regio's plan. And like in the original, Regio finds out that Sasuke's escaped and asks Ryuko to deal with her. After kissing Niru, Ryuko goes off to the ship to where her resistance is. And that is where we're gonna head off. I'm sorry if this seems short, there's probably a couple of long pauses, but again, the majority of this was taken up you know by the explanation from the recording it was about half of the video but uh, anyway, yeah again i hope I ex that explanation was well enough was good and i hope it didn't seem like more of a cop-out because again i overcomplicated it but you know so i hope you know this explanation i gave was what was good enough was was good so yeah oh anyway, yeah that's all i gotta say bye everybody and i will see you later whatever i make bye